So, um, so what I was hoping to do when we were working through the Master in Shiny um, book club, um, I took one of the example apps that was in there and um, kind of at, at various points converted it so that it was more easily testable and then converted it so that it was more so that it had modules and then converted it so that it was in a package structure. So what I was hoping to do, and I've, tr I've done it in a kind of trial run earlier on this morning, was to convert it to Gollum structure and tr tr try and follow the, um, the, the things that are mentioned in chapter four to see what they do to a pre-existing app and whether there's any kind of caveats that you might need um, when introducing Gollum to an already, um, an, you know, a, a shiny app that is already in a package, but, but that isn't necessarily um, uh, structured the way that Gollum would like it to be. Um, uh, because that's the kind of that, that's my typical programming um, experience at the moment is to work with um, l you know legacy apps um, and Gollum itself you know it, it it's describing itself as a, a way to kind of um, a, a way a way to introduce a kind of consistent structure to an app so that if someone comes in and takes over from you they will have a, a a better a clearer idea of what the different parts of your source code do and also that you you know with that you get testing infrastructure and deployment infrastructure and things um um yeah, so, but, 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 yeah, throughout the book, they mentioned thing, you know, that the best way to work with Gollum is to work with it from the start. And, and that just isn't the setting in which I write most of my shiny code. So I, I, I um, and, you know, if, if I've already got a Git history for an existing, I'm making this app sound more grand than it is, because really it's like, you know, it's only a handful of lines of code, but I've took it through a different, you know, various steps of um, um, the the shiny evolution. Um, yes, so they, they recommend using Gollum from the start, and that's fine if you're starting a new app, but it, in most cases, I'm not. I'm working with something that already exists, and, and you know, if, I don't want to have to throw away the Git history, copy in, you know, various files into a new app framework structure just to use uh, Gollum. Anyway, I'll get on with the chapter. So this um, chapter, um, who's here, by the way? It's just Federica and Ryan, isn't it? Yeah. That's correct. I don't see anybody else. Just that. <laughs> cool. Um, so there's only two sections in this, um, and um, they, they, the, I mean, the main part of this chapter is describing the various files and some of the functions that Gollum provides you with um, uh, that help when packaging up your app and things like that. So um, can I interrupt you yes, for yes, a sec? Of course. Uh, just we, I see half of the screen. Oh yeah, so half of the book. Uh, so the, the book is. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Okay, it's all fine. Um, right. Uh, so, what have we got here? What is Gollum? Gollum is a toolkit for simplifying the creation, development, and deployment of a shiny application. That's a quote from in the book, and um, there's a link here to. Um, sorry, my I've obviously made a mistake in the the hyperlinks there, but um, so this is the GitHub repository for Gollum. The I mean, thousands of commits. So this is a a pretty established tool, and you know 
well documented. I mean, we're working through a, bo a book on it, so you don't get much more um, well documented than that in the open source world. Um, and what I wanted to pull apart was this this um, sentence because, um, I mean, how does that how does that description um, differ from say Shiny Dashboard, which is a package for simplifying the uh, development of dashboard style shiny applications from use this which is a package for um you know helping you during the development um stage for um bringing a consistent test and file structure to your uh, packages and, and and things like that and to rs connect which is a an existing package for deployment of Shiny apps to either to shinyapps.io or to RStudio Connect, um, which are two of the main kind of, uh, I don't know what you'd say, corporate deployment platforms that RStudio have um, set up. Um, and I don't know, I think the, the, the fundamental difference is that um, while these will provide you functions with which you can deploy your app, what Gollum does is it kind of imposes a file structure upon you and it kind of um, veers you towards using modular code and, um, and, and you know, placing your, um, and, 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 and kind of forces you into creating an app in a package structure and things like that in a way that these tools don't, although you can readily create a, a, a package structured dashboard using Shiny Dashboard, you can um, um, ensure that you've got a, a, a kind of consistent file structure using use this and you can deploy using RS Connect. Um, would it would it be wise, Russ, if you don't mind, uh, would it be wise to state that maybe Golem provides you the infrastructure of, mm. of creating? So instead of the shiny dashboard as being this focus of the presentation media or the UI, uh, possibly use this. I'm not familiar with that. I'll have to go research what that implies. But the RS Connect is the, is the pointer that uh, uh, you route your shiny app to like shiny io correct rs connect is like your your i'd almost call it like a, a credential handler of mirroring what you have for deployment on your local machine to yeah. the web so that shiny is a shiny io is able to present it hmm. uh when yeah. triggered by the url so yeah. golem is is providing the infrastructure of additional resources like you had mentioned the package development type thought process yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I, I just thought it was an interesting contrast in in right. terms of you know there are there are tools available to help with each of these steps. You know, there's um, tools that will help you build our packages and things. There are tools that will help you build shiny apps of a particular style, or that will help you handle the you know the JavaScript parts of your shiny apps and things like that. What um, Gollum provides is a lot of the um, it, it it makes consistent a lot of the the, the kind of common tasks the um, you know um, where sorry I've listed them down here um, where should I put my JavaScript files and my CSS files where should I put um, where should I put and how should I name my modules and and, and things like that um possibly yeah, a uh, poor possibly a poor example but like let's talk about web development in general right mm -hmm. because this is a shiny focus or, or shiny oriented web development focused uh book so you could use dreamweaver if you chose to buy into adobe and, and create a website uh based on on a dreamweaver cms uh you have other tech writing platforms that generate static web pages, et cetera, or you could open up Microsoft Word and then save it or deploy it as an HTML file, 
right? All of them are doing common tasks, yeah. but it doesn't provide you the infrastructure to manage it in a global setting, right? Uh, I often uh, conflict with this argument from many users because they have Microsoft Windows computers, MS uh, Word is, is maybe a program they use. So they will often compare and say, well, okay, fine. I don't understand your Dreamweaver or I don't understand this other CMS type framework, uh, but I can build a website using Word. And I'm like, okay, fine. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with that comment. However, however, if you really want to ingest or comprehend exactly what the tools and widgets and JavaScript and everything else that goes along with web development, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to access that in word because it's already kind of in this, what you see is what you get type format. And I, maybe I'm, I'm probably uh, uh, boiling the ocean here or maybe extending the topic a little further, but um, I'm trying to provide some maybe thought of what Golem would do in regard to these other three packages uh, that can do similar activities, but may not be the right tool for the right job. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, sorry, I was just bringing it up as a kind of discussion point, really, the the, the, the kind yeah. of contrast between what Gollum does and what um, the, the kind of pre-existing tools do. Um, anyway, um, yes, so I think considering we're working on this book, uh, we've got a good idea of what kind of what, where Gollum fits within the shiny development world and um so i think i, I might m m move on if that's okay so there's um an example in the next section of chapter four where uh they generate a golem app from scratch um so this particular um command um if you've got golem installed locally will create a package called golex which will you know it will create a new directory in, as a subdirectory of where where you currently are in the file system um and within that it will add description and namespace which are kind of typical entities within a package uh, structure uh, for, for our an r subdirectory which will contain three main files that house the the code that does the kind of broad view of of your app you yourself will then define various you know modules and things that are pulled into say the server or the ui and and, and whatnot and and also you'll define various functions as well within there additionally there's a dev um directory which contains uh, scripts that you will run when um, um, when loading your app locally, when um, kind of adding, um, when you know adding new code to your app, and when deploying that app to um whichever service you choose to use <coughs> inst is a inst is a kind of it's a kind of funny directory it's where you contain um when um an r package is installed um the files that sit in the inst directory so anything here um will be moved up to the main directory so when this is installed on your local computer uh sorry because golex is a package now if you installed that as a package on your local computer in the the top golex directory there would be an app subdirectory and the dub 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 subdirectory below that so this is a, a kind of directory where you can um be, sorry it, it's sorry this is a long-winded explanation there's some very strict rules on what um your directory structure should look like if you're creating a package particularly if it's a package that's destined to go to cran or to bioconductor or something um 
and inst provides you with a way to include things like um runnable scripts or um importable data or, or, or things like that um that um so when your package is installed you can use something that's like system.file um and you know pull appropriate files out of this um man just contains the documentation but um because your app if you're if you're using golem because your app is structured um as a package any files within this r subdirectory to which you know where there's functions and kind of um data um sorry not data variable definitions if you append roxygen comments to them and then document your package you'll get um man pages formatted appropriately for you to use the kind of help function within r um which is you know another one of the kind of things that you get for free by packaging your app up as a, a kind of package um so we talked about description and namespace last week i think um and um so the description file contains things like you know uh, what does this particular package do? Who wrote it? What is the license for reuse of the code and things like that? And specifies those packages upon which your own package depends, be it um, things that you want to use while developing, things like test that or um, um, you know coverage type tools, or be it something like dplyr or tibble or something that you would actually use within the source code when the package is being used by users when your app is running on the um, server to which it's deployed um, namespace namespace uh, probably it's a it's a funny one really because um like bit, <laughs> whether you necessarily need to export your functions um when if if you're if you're generating a um a, an app in this format the only reason to kind of export functions is if you want to use them again in some other app that you're generating or in some other setting um you shouldn't need to export functions for your current app to use those functions but I, I i i don't know maybe i'm wrong um so um where are we start a script uh yes i'll show that um so if i pull i put an example um of Oh, where are we? Examples, Golex. Yes, so if I pull this over here, this is um, examples, Golex. Oh, God, have I nested Golex inside Golex? Right, um, so this is the, the um, sorry, I thought that would uh right um so this is the structure of an app that's generated using that golem create golem function you have the dev directory the ignore examples that, that's been added by by mistake by me um the inst directory which contains things like um your static files and things like that. Um, but uh, Russ, if you don't mind me uh, interrupting for a brief moment, what I found hard to interpret would be the use of, of uh, what is the word I'm looking for, alphabetical identifiers on RStudio 
like if you just look at, you know, starting out with the dot R build ignore, and then everything is in alphabetical order of, of your alphanumeric characters, then if you go over to your console and you run a tree command or your terminal and, and, and yeah. access this and run a tree command, then it gives it in the same format as the book indicates. Um, I thought that was a little bit of a nuance, a difference of, of how exactly it orders everything. Um, I may be, it, it may be my brain yeah, it's, and, uh, and that's an R studio association thing. Yeah. Um, uh, if you, yeah, so, um, uh, hold on, I'll limit that to, is it minus L two or something? Oof, I've forgotten the incantations, um, but, um, yeah, uh, the um, the yeah. So frequently you can have hidden files. Um, so some some files are, are invisible in our studio, even if you click um, to um, show hidden files. So <coughs> sorry, excuse me. If I add a, um, I can't remember exactly. Maybe a GitLab CI or something like that, or maybe a a, a dot lintar config file or something in, into these kind of directory structures. I've noticed in the past that they don't, they're not necessarily visible in our studio, and it's just a, I think it's just our studios hiding things that aren't a typical R package or R project um, file. Um, but yeah, in if you if you look in the the use the command line tools to to view the structure of the app, it's as it stated in the book. Um, yes, so there was um, dev one. If I pull this file up, um, sorry, I, I've got I've got a cold. Like my I've got a two year old daughter, and like for. For eighteen months, she's not really been, a, been been able to go to like, you know, kids groups and things like that because of lockdown, and um, and now she's <laughs> she's going to things, and every week she comes back and I get a new cold. <laughs> and um, anyway, so I, uh, I'm not particularly ill. I would just sound a bit rough. Um, right. Anyway, um, so this is a one start, and the purpose of this is to um okay so you can um this it, so that these scripts contain various things that you um you can so you can run one of these scripts and it will update your app right so um you have the name of the package and the kind of descriptive title of what that package is for if we um so oh, um if i um where am i so it would be at present in description the title is an amazing shiny app if i run this um dev oh one oh sorry i'm probably in the wrong directory and this is really gorex right sorry Sorry about this. I, I'm constantly getting beaten by um, matching parentheses and matching um, um, quotes and things. Um, right. So if I'm in here, which is the directory where this Golek e example has been put, and I now source dev slash 01. Oh, sorry. 
You're okay, sir. No, no apologies required. <laughs> I don't believe that. Right. So what have I got here? Um, so when running this uh, script, it's gone through and it's um, set the name of the package to GoLex. It's then taken this package title thing here and set up the package title there. Various other things. It's set up a license for me. <coughs> and um, so rather than what you would typically do while developing a package is directly modify the description file. Gollum's kind of urging you to um, use this function to put in, you know, your um, the metadata that would end up in a description file. Um, then there's various other things that it does as well. These are um, you would typically only run these. Um, uh, at the, when you initialize an app. Um, and um, so so what it's do, you know, so it might set up the, hold on, is it not added? This is something I have to do. Um, not now. And so, yes, so for example, it's added, testing infrastructure now. It's um, added um, the recommended dependencies. If I look in description again, it will have added um, various dependencies to that and stuff. So this is all fine. We're, but we're here we're using a pre-existing, um, um, Sorry, not a pre-existing, a brand new app. Um, where are we? So that should have navigated to O2. No, we didn't open that. Uh, let's go to O2 dev. So what this is, um, so the file we just looked at, this should be filled in when you first generate your Golem app. The script we're currently in should be used to keep track of your development during the project. <coughs> so what kinds of things does it do? So one line by line package you want to add as a dependency. So um basically it guides you through the building your yeah. app with, yeah. with a search. That's interesting. Yeah. It's funny though. I mean, so if I look in, what's this? Use this, use vignette. So has it added, uh, no, that's not where vignettes go anyway. Um, mum, 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 mum. Right, so if I, it should be used to keep track of your development during the project. So if I run this then, oh, what is this? Are you sure you want to update? Yes. Uh, okay, so that will now have navigated to here. If we look, if we source with a slash, O2, think our package is required. So what this is doing is it, it's, um, uh, excuse me. Um, yeah, so it's just, it, it adds the dependencies. I mean, you would normally do this using I would normally do this at the uh, you know at the R console to indicate that I wanted to use a particular package or whatever. Um, so the, it's it's like it's using kind of 
templates to to get you up and running. I don't I don't know. I can't imagine I would use this script multiple times during the development of a um a, an app. But it sounds like it's kind of um that that that's what it's that's what it's for. Anyway, um I like your then, comment template. The 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 templating or or the I, I was referring to it as the the uh, uh, underlying uh, meta infrastructure of your development environment, but mm. the the word template when you evoke that call, it automatically uses the variables to populate other services. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway, um, sorry, I went off on a complete tangent. So. Um, Yes. Uh, so, the, so between those scripts, there's various things to initialize your app. Various kind of commands that you might use while developing your app, and then the final one is a um, a script for. Um, come on. Oh, sorry. Everything's everything's too slow. I, I shouldn't have tried to install anything. Um, hold on. Uh, hold on. I can. I can. I can bring it up. Right. Oh, right. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. I'm being wind up by a dog as well. Uh, here we are. Deploy, right? Um, so, the deployment script. This is used um, when you deploy your app. So this is building the package into an installable entity. Um, this is um, adding the various files that you might use. So if you were deploying to shinyapps.io you might use this command. If you were deploying to our Studio Connect, you might use this file. If you were using, if you were deploying um, onto a server on which you've installed Shiny Server, you might. That's what use, I was going to. Yeah. yeah. So, so if you don't mind me interrupting, Russ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What no, we're cool. what when we when we talk about this these lines thirty, thirty one, and thirty two of your script, Golem add RS Connect uh, R Studio Connect file. Uh, add shiny apps IO file and then add shiny server file. The word file, I guess, is the question I'm having. So I'm guessing we're populating this with maybe some namespace that is taking us to another script file or, or some other uh, uh, instruction that would provide that to us. Would it be, would you be able to maybe? Uh, extend into that topic if not i can do my own uh discovery as well and maybe report back after so um right so what we got here add an app to our the root of your package so the the issue with the package structure is that all your code is well you know predominantly your your runnable code is written in the r subdirectory if you're deploying onto shinyapps.io or r studio connect or something like that you need an um you need a script or some scripts at the top level of your um repository so that might be app.r or it might be ui and server.r or you know with an optional global dot r file as well um and it is those files that are run um when um your app is initialized on shiny apps.io um we can um so I, i'm not entirely certain what structure shiny server requires that's yeah and that's really the question i'm i'm really curious about and i don't want to be self-fulfilling either i yeah. i, I want to commit or uh contribute to the community but if if right now the dev environment that i'm working off of i've got a 
a Linux server running, you know, uh, a LAMP stack with RStudio uh, currently deployed. And then on the other side of it, I also have a different port, but it's the, it's the Shiny uh, apps server as well. So in this case, the comment I made a couple of sessions ago, I said, if I want to deploy a Shiny app that I have, okay, well, I can, I can use the RStudio IO connect uh, feature of, of RStudio and port it to Shiny servers IO uh, user credentials. And then it'll, it'll automatically just capture everything that I need to deploy it on that server. If we are maintaining this in our own instance, and the third line is actually what I'm really, really focusing my attention on is, okay, now I'm giving the computer or the compiler instruction to say, I'm gonna take it from this folder structure and I wanna port it over to this other section of the same server, yeah. right? But it's the same commands or the same package, the same form of workflow that I would do from a RStudio, Shiny IO, uh, RS connector or, or Shiny IO type uh, logic. I'm just creating it myself because the computer has no idea what these uh, variable paths would be on the Shiny server. I have to give them that instruction yeah. so that it populates it uh, continually. And that, it, the, the updating of the Golem app would look at some of these, like the, I really like that help menu you had open a moment ago where it says, you know, uh, Golem uh, working directory, right? It just automatically knows that's the point. I'm, I'm going to send a command yeah. to the console, get Golem working directory, use that namespace to populate this path that I want to port it towards. Yeah. I hope I'm making sense or, or Frederick, uh, yeah. Frederick, or if you. Uh, I, I know. I'm yeah. listening. <laughs> Russ, I know you've used Shiny IO quite a bit, or, or yeah. you, you've yeah. had that experience. Frederica, have, have you used Shiny IO before? Or have you ever deployed any of your Shiny apps, Tidy Tuesday type stuff to Shiny IO? Um, yes, I have deployed a couple of apps on uh, Shiny IO. Yeah, uh, but that's easy. So that's for one app. In terms of production, you might need a server, and so maybe that, that there is a slightly different uh, procedure. I believe that you need to set some other uh, uh, commands. Uh, set up security measures but um, no, for me it's very interesting this uh, golem package because it guides you uh, to the building of your app and then if you need something you keep it otherwise you just throw it away and you like, um, use all just just the things that you need um, but uh, the, the still, uh, um, I need to, to uh, get inside the thing. Uh, I, I saw that you were doing an app uh, on Slack, and I, I did really like it, but I hadn't a sec for, for looking at it. So it would be interesting to, to set the thing up. But you know, if you do just this, if you do just shiny apps, you you quite fast doing it. Otherwise, if you do uh, sometimes the app, sometimes the graph, sometimes the model, uh, you need to have time dedicated for doing these things. But this is very interesting. So I like to be listening <laughs> or you're saying. Well, then, Russ, if you didn't mind me extending back to a comment you made at the very entry of your of your session today, you were mentioning that you already have an application, oh, right? Yeah, You've already yeah. developed it; it's already active, it's running, and and you know now I want to incorporate this you know full deployment uh, environment of templating around this current uh, path. Yeah, would yeah. would it be apt to say that you would just do like a GitHub add to that file and add it to the package and then run your update, your dev 0, 1, 2, and 3 updates so that all the variables within that context get populated or would it be more surgical than that? 
what I found was that, um, so for example, I, at, at present I'm on, um, hold on. Yeah, so right, okay. Um, so I I have an app at the moment. I've I've it is currently in a package structure. Um, so all the code is within R. There's no app.r file at the moment. Um, there is a uh, so the the code for running the app is within um, something called app.r that's within the r subdirectory. Um, so I can, you know, I can I can run this and um, hold on, if I if I run app r slash. I apologize. I hope I didn't open up a a uh, anything proprietary or or. Uh, oh no 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 not R. this at all. Uh, uh, all that's on all that's on the other screen. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. This is just um, da, 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 da. Ah, right. Yeah. Anyway. Um. Sorry. I, maybe I don't know quite what I'm doing here. Did not want to. So if I just um, and then I, sorry, I'd forgotten how to start this. Right. So this is an app within that's that's. That was originally written up in master in shiny um so there's a little graph at the bottom um a few tables so you can pick um these are um injuries in, that you know people presenting to emergency rooms with injuries caused by various um, household items, so sofas and whatnot. This is the type of injury they sustained, the region of the body to which they sustained it, and the place where it happened. So typically these are at home, but you know, you, there's a fair few at school or at work or whatever. And there's a comparison of injuries between male and female people. Right. So, so from that, I, I mean, I started with that and it was all in a single file. Then I added some, that added a, a, a single module to, to simplify some things and then added some functions and whatnot. And I was keen to see how this behaves when I use the Gollum workflow. Now I know that this isn't the tip. This isn't the route that they recommend to do this kind of thing because you know they'd rather you were using Gollum ab initio. Um, if we do create Gollum, um, the path is the current working directory and the package name. is your dot injuries dot sand pit. So if I open the help for, um, if I search for create golem, um, so I'm just uh, specifying the package name because the name of the package isn't the same as the directory in which this package is contained because of various reasons. Um, so what that has done has told me, I, do, you, do you really want me to generate this app within that directory because that directory exists? And, you know, I'm converting an existing app to a golemized app. So yes, I do want you to do that. Now, if we look, ooh, so we're restarting our studio. What it's actually done, if I look in here, is in our build ignore, it's changed some of this. So some of the files that I'd 
put it, you know, di- put in there. So like my license file is no longer in our building, nor and and it's overwritten of various various things because when when Gollum does this, it must just copy in a template of what a description file should look like, of what an R build ignore file should look like, and disregards what was already present in the directory. Um, so let's have a see if there's anything we can do to fix that. So there was this dev script where um, if I So this should be um, the title should be you know like from blah blah blah. If I change that back to what it was, oops. I think that's it. We'll just run that for now. Um, okay, then. Source dev slash L one that will um, excuse me, there's lots of things to do here. Um right, so but what that should have done though, if I reload description, because that was one of the first things, so it's now pulling in my package title from that dev script um it you know i can change this so that my first and last name come in as well and then it's gone on to do various things related to the licensing and, and stuff right i'll just get out of here um so i've now got uh, a situation where um I have to update my author's thing. I have to update my license thing. All the imports need to be re- <laughs> fixed again and, and, and stuff like that. This is all fixable stuff. But, you know, if, if there were, you know, if this was a description file that contained the number of dependencies that I've, I've seen in other apps where it can be, you know, 30 plus packages directly imported, um, it would be a a, a bit of a chore but you know you can you can fix these things in git quite easily um, 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 um yeah so um so i could i can do all that right what's the next thing so so the next thing that we'd kind of expect to do in here there's in the r directory there's an app ui dot r and what you would do is put your UI code, which currently is in here. Um, I would copy that over into this function, um, maybe including some of these things like Gollum add external resources and, and things like that so that I can pull in CSS files and whatnot. Um, similarly, in the app server function, <coughs> I would um, copy over my server function here. So this is pulling in a bunch of different data sets. Then um, Oh, sorry, that's the app. Um, where's the server? Oh, probably not. This is probably a bit complicated, actually. Um, anyway, were it a simpler app, <laughs> what I would do is just copy out the, 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 the code from the server function and put it in here. That in itself would be fine, and I'd be able to use the modules that I've predefined, the functions that I've already got in here. Um, but um, you would typically, um, so you would typically create modules using 
golems add modules, you would create functions using golems add, which <laughs> it needs a few more nouns for me. Um, uh, sorry, not nouns, vowels. Um, if I, so mod count table. So if I convert that over to add modules, is it modules or module? Modules. Um, count tables. Oh, maybe I've misspelled it. Um, add module. So what that's done, it has, which is the newer one? Is it this one? Yeah, so this has added, I my previous file was mod dash count tables, and this is mod underscore count tables. I can take the um, server code from, uh, sorry, the UI code and the server code for these two functions and copy them over to the inside of here. So this is using, is it using module server? Is that correct? Yeah. Um, so ap apart from the um, file names differing and the function names being slightly different, so this is mod underscore count table server, and my original was just count table server. Um, the naming conventions are quite similar. And I could then update my um, count tables and um, UI and server, the names of those so that the appropriate functions pulled in. And then I can get rid of mod dash count subtables. Um, Similarly, I can uh, convert, so what have I got? Count by weight is a function here. If I add, go oh, hold um. So but in practice, does it help you? Does um, it help you to, to, to do the thing or? Uh, well, yeah, I, the, the problem is this is, I mean, this is a lot of busy work just to get the app back to the running state that it was in to begin with. But um, but it means that it isn't it, it but it it removes a bit of the it, the kind of mental space. So um, so I don't have to ensure that you know my modules are called the same thing and that um, they have the UI as a suffix rather than a prefix and things like that and uh, you know. Um, which is minutiae that aren't important until you need to grep through a dozen files to find the right function and you've forgotten how you named it to begin with and things like that. So it's, it is beneficial, but it would probably take an hour or two to get a simple app into a golemized form. But once it's it, in that form, it's more easy to add additional content in using these helper functions that Gollum provides. Maybe a really, really, really bad term to use. Would, would containerizing be a way, or uh, this is not good English, but functionizing uh, your, your, your code base? So, Frederica, what, what you would do if you had multiple steps within your app UI or your server UI, now it becomes these smaller snippets of code base that now you're managing these smaller components in the larger global context of the app itself. Does that, am I stating that correct, Russ? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, Maybe it's not. not like, it's not like, um... It, introducing Gollum into this app won't change the grand design of the app, the, the software design of the app. It will change, it will mean that a few functions get renamed and a few files get renamed. But the app will 
behave the same as it did. The modules will be the same as they were. They'll just have different names and things. Um, but what in introducing Gollum will do in the long run is it will make it easier to add further um, functions and modules and whatnot. And it will make it easier to deploy this app. Um, because, you know, things like working out how to add that app.r file and how to ensure that your um, www directory gets pulled up from inst into the um, main repository directory and, and things like that when upon deployment. I mean, they're just, you would be able to work out how to do it, but it, they're, they're just nagging problems that you'd rather someone else had already kind of fixed. Um, so yeah, I, I can see why it is beneficial. Um, but yeah. Uh, I can see my, I can see myself as well, because um, if you, you have, a, uh, if you start since the beginning, then you really use the, the UI and the server as an engine of the app and then you add files like with data and things that you sources in the UI and uh, from the UI or the server and then you have all listed here I think you can adjust it as, as long as you need it <coughs> that would be sorry about my dog Let's go ahead that would <laughs> I'm used to that. yeah I think that would be that would be uh, useful because you can add uh, an uh, uh, one another module yeah. with more features. <coughs> Sorry about that. You have it there. So if you just need F to troubleshoot that that bit, you find it easily instead of scanning the uh, skimming the app. And yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it 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 does seem quite reasonable to to, to convert. It. I mean, I know that my my app structure probably turned out that it wasn't straightforward to convert it but um i think it would be i think it would be a more pleasant experience to to develop using a golemized app based on what i've seen but i mean this was this was an app that i'd converted into a package and i i i'm still not overly keen on package structure but uh for you know the the additional um work that it uh, kind of implies but, um, but yeah. at least up to this point in the book it's the thought process of mass production right mm, it's, yeah, it's it's yeah. it's it's i don't know you've built your your press now you're feeding it raw material and it's putting out widget a b and c right mm -hmm. so you're 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 not you're not a craftsman building a a very unique one piece you know, per 10 months of production, now I can mass produce something by just running a command line and, and letting the, the computer uh, uh, generate it out. It would be a cost savings benefit. And the, the thing that just keeps running in the back of my mind, and I, I know I apologize if I'm maybe repeating myself, but I think about the CI CD process, right? The DevOps type deployment of I've got a code base, I commit it to GitHub or GitLab, whichever version control you would like, if you have those CI CD links or Docker container type links, your YAML file automatically calls on a Linux server and then populates it with your flavor of whatever special sauce you have. And then now you've got a production application uh, in the wild. By modifying the smallest piece, you may break other things, but because of this templating or this testing type sequence or, or command line type sequence, you can modify your one component of text, redeploy the app, this whole slew of, of things in the background get processed and your web app is still up and running or maybe the, the uh, disruption of the site not being available is minimized to the smallest degree. Does that, yeah. maybe I'm summing up everything, Russ, or oh, Rick, yeah. does that help? Right, cool. Sorry, I, I did hope to get into chapter five today um <clears throat> but um i don't think my throat would allow me to talk for much longer anyway um yes um but 
Um, yes, I, 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 what I like about this is that if if someone came to you with a Gollum app for you to work upon, it would it would already have you you wouldn't have to do anything extra to be able to run you know write some tests for that code to um you wouldn't have to do a great deal extra to ensure that you could deploy that app i can i can see where you're coming from there um um yeah so i i, I don't know i mean i what i like what what yeah, i mean the whole thing with shiny is like um i can i can see the the benefits of things like this and and also like i mean i did a bit of work in django a, a year or two ago and it, it, it ha from having no web experience and what i quite liked about that was that that django kind of forced you to put files in a pro it, it, you know in certain directories and, and 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 you could readily have written a web app using python you know, just using the appropriate calls. But Django made kind of forced you to structure that app in a way that meant it would be easier to hand it off to someone else. And I think um, Gollum performs the same role that Django does um, for, you know, for Python web apps, although presumably there's a, a thousand and one different. Um, um, web frameworks for, for Python as well. And, but Gollum does it for Shiny, for which Shiny apps come in so many different structures. <laughs> like, I mean, there, the, the, this use of the R directory, I, I, I was talking to a colleague about it today. It, it, like, I mean, I knew about it because I only started learning Shiny a year or so ago. And, um, and my colleague didn't know about this, that you could put your function code and module code in, in the R subdirector and it will be automatically imported into your app when that's running. Um, earlier, you know, people making apps two or three years ago would have, um, would have made any number of directories that so for example you might have had a ui directory and a server directory or something like that and the main app.r would have sourced files from within those directories those those apps are still completely valid shiny um but their structure is somewhat different from what you'd expect in a modern shiny app and Gollum makes it more difficult to write an app that is kind of you know the uh, structure of the wild west you know where there's no fences or anything um and i think yeah i can i can i really can see the benefit of having one well defined structure for how a shiny app ought to be structured, uh, well defined, well well defined um, template for how a shiny app should be structured, um, and I think a, a lot of the shiny world is migrating over to putting, you know, the bulk of their code in R and things, and 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 things are starting to look more and more like packages, but um, yeah. Gollum seems to kind of force you to do it, which is probably be better in, in, in some ways. Um, anyway, um, yes, I've, I've talked for far too long. Um, sorry, I didn't get into chapter five, um, but uh, it's, it, it outlines um, five different steps that you would go through when... Um, when designing an app or to, to my mind when designing a new thing that you want to add on to an app um so you might 
so, sorry, I'm saying design and it's the first step. Um, when introducing a feature that you might want to add to an app, you might design both the look and the kind of software structure that you would use for that. Prototype a couple of ways that that feature could be introduced. Having prototyped, you might build um, a more robust version based on you know feedback on your prototypes, and then build in tests and um, various other you know kind of um, um, anyway, and then deploy uh, the newly modified app. Obviously, this the these steps are also if you're building an app from the ground up there are also in, you know these are probably much more important in that setting um and the later part of the book covers each of those steps in more detail there's also stuff about optimization and the use of kind of web front-end languages and things uh, which don't quite fit into this um um these this workflow um but yeah i'm not gonna go through chapter five in much detail what i will do is i'll put some notes related to chapter five into the um book club um uh repo and i'll try and start some discussion points off within the book club um slack channel and I think next week we'll probably go on to chapter six, if that's cool. Because, um, I mean, there is interesting stuff in chapter five, but um, I think it would it would be quite nice to have get some of the more, um, the, you know, the people who can't attend the um, video meetings to I'm just trying to work out how to um, what kind of content I need to add to the Slack channel to make them feel more um, part of the book club. Um, I think uh, one of the things that scared everyone with at least just I and Frederica as mm. the, the group currently, but uh, the word engineering on the front of it, I think that may <laughs> have, have probably immediately thought, ah, I'm not that person. But no, this is uh, uh, very rewarding to participate or to see the underlying infrastructure of how these tools are used and deployed or sorry used and then uh, to be able to, to deploy a, a uh, shareable producible reproducible app yeah cool cool I, yeah Right. Um, uh, I can do a chapter um, okay, cool. in the in the next um, weeks. I don't know if the next one or the, the following is as the same. As in... Sure. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, next week is all about the user experience, um, and um, so th yeah, the next two chapters I think are both about how you should. Um, don't rush spend, into coding. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he's spying me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you'd like to do a talk next week, or you'd like to do a talk the following week, maybe about the the prototyping um, sections, that that would be good as well. Um, I mean, you're you're free to choose. If okay. if you can't do it next week, then I can knock out some notes relatively quickly. I, I, hopefully, because. Um, <laughs> because, because I'm on my own at home this week, <laughs> so I've, I've got lots of time for hobbies. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, but um, yeah, if you'd like to talk next week or the following week, that that would be brilliant. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, okay. just tell us in Slack if 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 if, if you can't do it next week. Um, cool. Okay. Great. Cool. Lovely to see you both again. Bye. <laughs> see you later. <laughs>